48. We're jumping right into our final segment with our friends from the Unit Trust Corporation, our guests, Wendy Bishop, Marketing Manager, UTC, and Jessica Howard, Seymour Investment Center Manager. Ladies, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Always a pleasure. All right, yeah, we're talking about retirement. Very important. Uh, I like the, 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 the analogy of how many pay steps you have left. Let's start with you, Wendy. And uh, when should we start thinking about retirement? Most people put it off till their late 40s, unfortunately. I know. Not a good thing. Not a good thing at all, Paul. Because it is such an important stage in our life, we at the New Trust Corporation suggest that you start planning for retirement mm -hmm. as soon as you are gainfully employed. So if you are age 18 and you are gainfully employed, that is you are receiving a paycheck, you should start saving now. For retirement. For retirement. Mm -hmm. And we want to suggest a couple of things to consider. One. Establish the age at which you wish to retire. Is it 50, 55, 60? Or, and the second thing is, how much money would you need in retirement? So to determine that, we have to, you have to consider two factors. One, your current monthly expenses. Mm -hmm. And secondly, how many years you will spend in retirement. So if it is that your well, life expectancy is 70. I was about a, to ask that. How, you, how do you determine how, how many, much money you need if you don't know when you're going to expire? Yeah, so life expectancy as a population mm -hmm. is 70. So that's the average. The average, 72 oh years God. old. And if you are, if you're a male, <laughs> you are 69 years old. So if you're a male and about, and you're planning for retirement, you can, the minimum amount you should really save is like say 10, for 10 years, mm -hmm. which equal, equates to or converts to 120 months. Mm -hmm. So if your monthly expenses are $3,000, and you're and you're going to say you're going to retirement retirement or a retiree for say ten years, then 120 months in retirement by three thousand, mm -hmm. you will need three hundred sixty thousand dollars in retirement minimum. Mm -hmm. And that's minimum. Minimum. Because, you know, with the advent of medicine and good medical care, we're living beyond that. Mm -hmm. and yes. I'm glad you said that. Let me bring Jessica into the conversation. That, that's a, a general living expense figure. Yes. How much should you cater extra for health issues, which are going to become more evident the older you get in retirement? Well, with, the, uh, with inflation, okay, you look at what you, you're spending now, look, mm. look at what your monthly in expenses are now, and you add a percentage onto that. Mm. And as Wendy indicated just now, you look, you, you, um, you de look at about 20 years, 20 mm. to 25 mm. years, and you look at what you are spending now, you multiply that for an annually, and you multiply by the number of years that you think. Mm -hmm. you, you do an average of 20 to 25 years, mm -hmm. all right? And you can add like a 10% onto that. So that can you know, help you to cushion maybe medical expenses and your annual expenses, your monthly expenses as well. Mm -hmm. Pe people are working later, Wendy. How should they factor that in? past 50, past the 65 years, they have added streams of employment or, 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 or salary generation. How should they factor that into their retirement plans? Well, how you can start planning for retirement is that you look at what lifestyle you would like to have mm -hmm. during those golden years. So if it is you want to go on your cruise, or it is that you really want to start working for you, you determine. Because sometimes what we do is that we let our birthdays determine when we retire. Mm -hmm. But now we are, as I mentioned before, living longer and in good health. So a 60 year old looking nice and agile and vibrant. So you can live beyond those years, but your lifestyle that you want in retiree will determine how much you would want to save and how long you spend in retirement as mm. well. What pitfalls should we try to avoid, Jessica, in terms of getting ready for retirement? Okay, well, what we would want to do is to not to borrow from our, sa our, our savings for retirement. Mm -hmm. It should be two separate things. It should be two separate things. We would want- And possibly an investment portfolio. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we mm -hmm. would want to look at our investment portfolio for retirement from time to time mm -hmm. and adjust it based on whatever is happening in the retirement, the environment, for mm -hmm. example, inflation. If the inflation rate right in February it was 4%, mm -hmm. we would want to look at Look, look at it from time to time and adjust accordingly. Mm -hmm. An addition, another pitfall would be, uh, besides borrowing from your uh, in um, savings, from, from your savings, you would retire it with too much debt. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that the money you would have maybe for the uh, medical expenses, or you might have to pay mortgage. Mm -hmm. Um, credit card payments, a number of things. It's that going to eat into your retirement. It's going to eat into your retirement. And then to not saving enough, not saving enough money for retirement. Mm -hmm. So that when you, if you retire at say 
um, your your time, your last final sal your final final salary is six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You would get two thirds of that as your retirement income. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be four thousand dollars. But if you have with the pr rising prices and a flat income throughout your your retirement life you see there's a gap. Yeah. So then we would, you would need to supplement that. I'm glad you said that, Wendy. Let's I, talk about that. I just want, to add, mm -hmm. just want to add, in terms of not saving enough, in 2010, an American insurance company did a survey with uh, persons ages 44 to 75, and they asked the question, what do you fear most, dying or outliving your money? And 61% said outliving their money, mm -hmm. and 39% said dying. So if it is that you want to really enjoy retirement and not fear, you need to start saving for retirement now. How do you deal with, how do you factor in pension and NIS contributions to that? Uh, most of the, the, the sound thinking people realize you have to put aside uh, some extra or devise some extra instrument or employ some extra instrument in addition to those facilities to make sure that you're comfortable and taken care of into retirement. Yes, so when it is that you have your company's pension, then you can you make your 750 contribu weekly contributions to your NIS, mm. then you will get a monthly income, pension income from NIS as mm. well. Mm. If you have not contributed to NIS your whole 750, you'll get a grant, a lump sum grant, a one-time payment. Mm -hmm. So if it is, so we're assuming that you did contribute to NIS your 750 weekly contributions, so that's a $3,000 monthly. Mm -hmm. So you have that on top of your, say your 4,000, because if you're, you retire at 6,000, then your salary will be, your pension income, sorry, will be two thirds of that, which is 4,000. Mm -hmm. And then we also advise that you have some annuities as well. Yeah. So try to help you and cushion, mm -hmm. because as you mentioned earlier, excuse me, in terms of health, health, and, concerns. Yes, health mm -hmm. concerns and any, any unforeseen circumstance, mm -hmm. you need to plan for those things. So having as much of a nest egg as possible will mm -hmm. actually well, can only um, make you a happier retiree. Is it practical to expect to maintain one's lifestyle into retirement? Well, you can. Well, you have to plan for it. You, you have, have to plan, plan for it. <laughs> so you look at your monthly expenses and you look at that, that for the month, you look at it for the year, and you look at it for the number of years. And you put, you put it, you budget. You mm -hmm. budget for that monthly. Mm -hmm. So. When you when you budget for that, you 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 adjust. Then eh? you keep you keep mm -hmm. looking at it because things change all the mm -hmm. time, and you don't want to borrow from that. You don't want to interfere with that because then it it it, it would interfere with your your um, the, the, the your lifestyle yeah, down, down the road. road. Yeah. So you need to have we we advise that you look at. We have investment vehicles. We have our URF, mm -hmm. your universal retirement fund. We have our individual retirement unit account, mm -hmm. and we have Pensions Plus. All these, they, what they have in common is that they're equity based. They've invested in stocks and mm -hmm. shares, and that helps you to beat inflation, which mm -hmm. is a, ve a very, a very factor. important mm -hmm. factor mm -hmm. that would eat into your in um, your income when mm -hmm. at, at retirement. W Wendy, as we close into our last two minutes, let's talk about the different age groups and what they should be in, in terms of thinking about when looking to invest in these three options with the Unit Trust Corporation. Uh, a 20 year old, a 30 year old, or I guess a 40, 50 year old. So if you're 20 years old, how we, we look at it in terms of diversifying your portfolio, we ask that you put 20% in fixed income instruments, for example, our TT Dollar Income Fund, mm -hmm. and 80% in our equity products, for example, the Individual Retirement Unit Account, our Universal Retirement Fund, and also our, uh, our Pensions Plus. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, so 20 years old, 20% fixed income, 80% equity. If mm -hmm. you're 30, then the equation changes some. 30% in fixed income and 70% in equity. So it depends on your age, age you are. yes. So the closer you are to retirement, the less you will have in equity mm -hmm. and the more you have in fixed income because at that time you'll be going into your your savings in order to continue your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, and more information, you can force us join and go down to the Unit Trust Corporations, uh, many branches throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. Or call to, to set up an appointment to talk to one of your investment counselors, I like to call you. Yes, <laughs> and uh, we have our, we do fin free financial planning seminars, so mm -hmm. call us at 625 8648, mm -hmm. and also we have our financial advisors at the same number as well. All right, ladies, thanks for being with us. You're Always very sound advice. We'll be talking to Jessica Howard Seymour, Investment Center Manager, and also Wendy Bishop, Marketing Manager. At the
Another Unit Trust Corporation. Plan for your retirement. Diversify your portfolio. All right, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us on behalf of the entire team. Don't forget, join us again tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. First on the air. Anywhere, stay tuned. News is next, right here on CTV.